Thank you, Matt. Exciting game Saturday night against Louisiana Tech, one that we led from wire to wire. Uh, our guys came out uh, emotional after honoring Herman Williams, one of our fallen teammates, and uh, responded being first to the floor, playing great defense, and uh, driving the basketball, which is what exactly what we wanted to do to get off to a 26 to 6 lead. Uh, Eric McCree warmed up for those guys and, and kept them in the game the first half and, <clears throat> and played well throughout. Second half, we built the lead back up, knowing that they were going to make a punch at us. And uh, Boykins winds up seven for seven, his last seven threes, the last nine minutes of the game uh, to make it uh, a one possession game at one time, which a little bit closer than we had hoped. We made a couple of bad choices on the offensive end on the break. We were attacking their press and didn't use time and score properly a couple of times and we were able to survive it. I, I felt like we were the tougher team. Uh, it's and it shows when you give up 55% from the floor and 41 from the line or the three-point line you get out shot both of those and wind up winning the ball game and it's because we turned them over we got to the free throw line more and outscored them 10 at the free throw line so that that was a, a important stat line for us we also out rebounded those guys five uh, we're excited about the opportunity to go to Georgia and play the University of Georgia in Athens on Wednesday. It'll be a tough challenge for us. They've got two all-conference caliber players in Frazier and Mayton. Uh, they're, they're big up front. They're going to try to pound the ball inside on us. And uh, we're going to have to be very physical and rebound the ball. We'll have to attack their pressure, their zone defense, their man defense, and, and have some success on that end. We're looking forward to the challenge. Got a couple of guys that are banged up today uh, and uh, a couple of guys that are sick. So we're not at 100%, and we're going to try to get as healthy as we can in the next day and a half. We've got a couple of guys going to the doctor and to the, the student health nurse as we speak. Uh, nationally, we're still scoring the ball well, eighth in the country, uh, 11th in the country in field goal percentage, uh, fifth in the country in free throw attempts, 14th in free throw free throws made. A uh, couple of things that we really take pride in doing, we're ninth in the country in rebound margin, 21st in scoring margin, uh, 26th in turnover margin, and 25th, 25th in steals. Uh, so our guys have done a great job. Bryce is tied for the national lead in double doubles, and we're leading the conference in all the stats that I just mentioned. So off to a good start, we've got to continue to build, uh, it's nice to win, go a calendar month at where we are today from our last loss. It doesn't happen very often. Been fortunate here, it's happened. This is the fourth time that it's happened since I've been here. Uh, first time it's happened in non-conference play though. And that's really hard to do for a school at our, our level. So proud of that. We're looking forward to going and playing Georgia and getting prepared for UNO at Lakefront Arena on another televised game Saturday afternoon. Coach, it seems, it seems like small lineups are kind of a trendy thing in basketball right now. How much versatility do you have with the fact that you can play multiple guards and go a little small? We're very versatile. Uh, Jonathan Stove can slide down and play the four for us. He's strong enough to do that. Frank's a, a strong guard. Uh, we've got quickness. Uh, we've got some shooting. Rebounding's the key, and we, we've got to be able to attack people off the dribble and then also be able to rebound with them if we're going to play small. But we do have a lot of options. Uh, Bryce can play multiple positions as well as other guys on our team. So with, with Georgia being strong, like you said, inside though, and you guys being a strong rebounding team, what approach do you take? Do you do extra rebounding wise or do you try and go small on them and beat them with the season? Well, the lineup changes throughout the game almost every game. Uh, we talk about a starting lineup, but really the meat of the game lineup is the, the, when we want to play small. Um, but we can do it different ways, and it'll depend on what's going on in the game. If we feel like the matchups aren't in our favor, then uh, we'll change it and try to use it to our advantage, be it small or big. No, he's going to play through it. He, he won't get shut down. Uh, he doesn't want to do that. He's 
fighting through. It's a, it's a really bad bone bruise, and he's not 100%, as you can tell. And he, he struggled a little bit the other night with it, but he's done a good job, made some key plays for us also. Had a couple of poor games in a row, actually. Played good against Nichols, and then against McNeese and Loyola, he wasn't very effective, and he'd be the first one to tell you that. And he, he told me after the game, Coach, I wasn't ready to play. So uh, we challenged him. We got him in the gym. He came over the morning before uh, on Friday, got extra shots up over here, and uh, along with Jonathan Stove, and I thought it carried over uh, into his, his preparation and his play. He had some success early. And we talked about shooting the three-point shot. He's a very good shooter, but he has not shot a good percentage. Uh, he worked on that. And then at the end of the half, we ran a play for him to shoot it or go one-on-one. He jumped up and made our only three of the first half, so it was big. And he also shot the first and the second half. It didn't go in. Uh, I guess he was feeling good through the halftime. Uh, but Justin can score a lot of different ways, and uh, we need him to, to be a factor. He needs to rebound the ball a little bit better. But he's doing exactly what we thought he could do when we signed him. PJ Hardy uh, seems like he's starting to figure things out a little bit more at this level. What have you seen in his growth so far? Gets better every day. He's working at it. His footwork got better this summer, and he shot the ball very well. It's carried over. Uh, he missed a, a couple of shots in the first half, and he's shooting the ball with confidence. And then he had an open look and shot faked and got called for a travel. Talked to him about that at halftime. Also talked to him about his defense at halftime. And he came out the second half and made three big threes for us in a stretch where we're trying to match Boykins a little bit. So it was important that those shots went in. Uh, but PJ has a bright future. He's continuing to learn. And we're pushing him every day. Coach, having played uh, two early games on the road, uh, kind of in a hostile environment such as you know Minnesota and then in Montana, uh, can you talk about just going and what that's going to be like for this young team? Well, it'll be an opportunity to, to go home for Jay Wright, one, uh, a Georgia native. I just got off the phone with uh, his high school coach, uh, also Jakeenan's high school coach, and uh, he's going to try to make the game if he can. It's going to be difficult because it's 5 a.m. start or, or 5 p.m. start, and he's three hours away, and he has practice of his own. Uh, but to play in SEC school, it'll, it'll be important. Uh, for our guys to go out and play well, and they're looking forward to the opportunity. Uh, being Christmas break, I don't know what kind of crowd they'll have, and the environment uh, hopefully won't be that hostile. It's been a long time since I've been in that Coliseum. They re revamped it a little bit, but I haven't been there since I was in college. Beyond that, um, what does UNO present? And, you know, probably going to have more fans than you used to on the road, so what kind of a difference maker can that be? We hope our fans come out for, for the UNO game and more importantly come out and, and see this basketball team and want to come back in the spring and watch our conference tournament at Lakefront. That's, that's my idea of, of this weekend, getting a good crowd in there. But it uh, should be a good opportunity for us. UNO has got off to a good start. They struggled a little bit yesterday. And uh, to be honest, that's about all I know about them. Start prepping on those guys on, on Thursday. We started uh, with our last road game at James Madison, uh, or, or one of our road games at James Madison. And Frank had 28, and then Jay had 27. I mean, they got 55 between them. We're going to be hard to beat if those guys score the ball like that. And they've continued to do it in other games. They're versatile. They can both handle the ball. The one thing that I've called them in my office last week, and we had a sit down, and went over some things. They've got to take better care of the ball. Frank had five turnovers over the day. We're not executing the way we need to at times, and we're trying to force the issue. Uh, but outside of turnovers, which Jay had five assists, no turnovers on Saturday. Uh, good, good job for him. But they give us uh, two aggressive guards. We set it back in the fall. We thought with Stowe being in the mix, he's been out, and we've still been able to win. So their play is uh, important to our success. Uh, Justin Miller, uh, Lorenz Stalkup, you know, Kadavian Evans is still out. Uh, Frank had some issues at the end of the game. He's cramping a little bit. So 
to see how we, we are today. I've been on the, in contact with the trainer today, uh, and we'll see here in about two hours what we need to do. Everybody good? Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you.